After learning the basics of IPv6, it's time to put it into practice a little bit and see it working in action. So here's the latest version of Packet Tracer, version 7.2.2, and we'll just play a little IPv6 and see if we can get a PC to auto-configure an IPv6 address from a router that has IPv6 enabled. So I'll click on Network Devices and grab a 1941 router, then Switches, a 2960 series switch, and then End Devices, a PC. Then we'll we'll wire this up here so gigabit 01 let's go to gigabit 00 here the first interface and then the PC's fast ethernet to the switch fast ethernet and that's going to come up and now it's time to configure the router so I'll go into the router to the CLI tab if your CLI tab is hidden all you have to do is go to options preferences and font and oh, I'm sorry hide and then just unhide the CLI tab sometimes if you're in an activity it will hide certain tabs from the user and then when you open up the program the those interfaces or those tabs are still hidden so you just have to unhide it in the options preferences okay so the router here I'll type no and enter to get started I should have a blank prompt I'll type enable to get to privileged exec mode and configure terminal to get to global config mode. And the first thing I'm gonna to wanna to do is turn on IPv6 unicast dash routing so that the router can route IPv6 packets, but also it can begin sending out router advertisements, neighbor discovery, neighbor advertisements. It can start using the neighbor discovery protocol ICMP version six if we turn that on. Now I'll go into the gigabit 00 interface and I'll give it an IPv6 address. Now the first address I'm going to give it is a link local address. I'll statically configure it. So FE80 colon colon 1 and statically configure the link local address to just be host 1. So router 1 then you have to put in link dash local. I hit tab for tab completion there. So there's my link local address, statically configured to just a one, so it's nice and easy. And then for the global unicast address, I'll put in 2001 colon DB8 colon ACAD for Cisco Academy and colon one. And then what about my interface ID? This is the network portion. And then for the interface ID, I can just statically also configure it to be host one. Slash 64 is the network prefix. That means that the first 64 bits, the first four hex tets, are, is the network portion. The last 64 bits in the address is the interface ID, which we've just set to one, and that's nice and easy. So there's the two addresses, link local and global unicast routable on the internet. Now you might ask, well, why do they always use 2001 DB8? In the Cisco Academy, Cisco, this is Cisco's address. So by using it, you're not using uh, some public address on the internet that's um, someone else's real address. So I'll put in the no shut command to turn the interface on. And now the interface is on. So the router should start advertising on the network about uh, itself trying to reach other devices that are IPv6 enabled. Now we could probably see this in real time if, let me fast forward here a little bit. There we go. So we got all green lights. I'll go to simulation mode and then show none. And then I'll choose which protocols we want to observe. So we want to observe, let's say ICMP version six and then neighbor discovery protocol. This is actually ICMP version six too, but the neighbor uh, solicitation, neighbor advertisements, router solicitation, router advertisements. So we'll put in those. And then we should be able to see the packets go across the network. So I will go over to the PC, to the desktop, to the IP configuration. And as soon as I click, notice under the IP, before I do this, before I uh, go to auto config and turn on my IPv6 interface on the PC here, notice the PC already has a link local address. 
So it already has an IPv6 link local address. Notice the FE80. Notice the FFFE in the middle. That's the telltale sign that this interface ID was configured with EUI64. That means that this, was, this interface ID was built from the MAC address. So if we notice here, A4636C, A4636C, and if I go to the command prompt and do an IP config all, you can see here A4636C. There is the last six characters of the MAC address, the physical address. And then the first six characters is 00D0BC. Now the seventh bit will be flipped, which means this will be a 02D0BC. Let's take a look. So if we go back to IP config, sure enough, 2D0BC. So there it is. There's the 2. The 0 got changed to a 2. But you can see here, and we don't see the 0 because it's been compressed. So this 2D0 has been compressed, which means it's really 02D0BC. So there's the first portion of the MAC address and the end portion of the MAC address. And this, this interface ID was built basically using EY, Extended Unique Identifier 64, which converts the 48-bit MAC address into a 64-bit interface ID. Now, if I go to Auto Config and click Auto Config, you can see there's the neighbor discovery protocol just teed up on the PC getting ready to be sent to the router. If we open it up, look at the outbound PDU details, you can see that the source link local address is the source IP address, link local source IP address, IPv6 address that is. The destination IPv6 address is FF02 colon colon 2, the all routers multicast address. And then you can see it's a router solicitation message type x85 here. And let's see, let's see what happens now. So you can see here there's the hop limit in the IPv6 layer 3 header and um, the flow label the next field, the traffic class field, version 6, IPv6 in the version field. All right, so what we'll do is we'll just watch this go. I'll hit forward. There goes the router solicitation to the router. Responds with a router advertisement. Let's take a look at it. Inbound PDU details. So there's the router advertisement message. All right, we'll see here. There is the MAC address of the router, link layer information. This is the layer two physical address that the router's sending. Um, and then let's see here, the prefix option. So here's the lifetime information, how valid this information will be for. There is the network portion of the address. We learned that it's a 2001 DB8, a CAD one. The prefix length is 64 bits. We learned that the network prefix is 64 bits. And we also need to learn the FE80 colon colon one address. Now I'm looking for that. That's the link layer. It should be here somewhere. Let's see here, oh, there it is. The source IP address, there it is. The source IPv6 address is FE80 colon colon one. So the PC learns that the router's link local address is FE80 colon colon one. So now we've got all the information that we need. And if we go back to the PC and look, you can see that it learned the network portion. It auto configured the interface ID. Notice this auto configuring the interface ID is the same as the interface ID portion in the link local address and it learned that it's a slash 64 network prefix, and it learned that the gateway is FE80 colon colon one. The only thing that the PC doesn't learn is the DNS server information, which we didn't have. We could set up a DHCP version six server on the router so that the PC could also learn the DNS server information. And we'll do that in a future video. So if you wanna do this video, uh, if you wanna do this activity in an older version of Packet Tracer, let's say Packet Tracer 6.3,
you can see that it works in Packet Tracer 6.3 as well. You can do these same commands in Packet Tracer 6.3. The interface looks a little different, but it's the same tools. And um, yeah, it's basically the same setup in the older version of Packet Tracer as well.